so what we are going to do today is we are having audio data set we are going to work with the audio data set and uh, there are uh, first of all we have to understand uh, how to uh, what are the components in an audio signal uh, how do we represent that data in uh, in our memory computer's memory secondly uh, we have to understand how do we pre process it for uh, giving as input into the deep learning model okay second thing is this and we have to understand the feature extraction part as well as classification part okay so first of all uh, about the data set so there are three i have given link for three data set you can use any of these three uh, i am going to show you uh, we are uh, going to uh, i suggest that you visit this first one and it's a very popular data set consisting of uh, 10 journals and it consisting consists of 100 songs of each journal okay and uh, these journals are maybe disco uh, jazz pop rock classical and so on so it is having 100 songs with respect to each journal okay uh, also you if you want uh, because this data set these data sets are very huge data sets consisting of you know so many uh, it's i think 1.3 gb i think so it's a very huge data set so if you don't want to download these data sets what you can do is you can create 10 audio files for similar kinds of words uh, for example pair and pair so these are pronounced similarly so you can uh, class if, if your model is able to classify similar kinds of words then your model is good okay so you can uh, you can uh, record 10 10 uh, voices two classes any two classes and then you can train your model on that as well okay so this is about the data set Next, we are going to see today how do we perform, how do we work with the Librosa library, which is specifically meant for audio, uh, uh, for audio signals, audio data set. And uh, we are going to see what is a short term Fourier transform and what are the other, other things associated with the audio data set. Okay. Then rest of the part is same. You have to do training and testing after we, are, we have pre-processed the data. You have to perform training and testing and you can either train the simple neural network model or you can uh, train a convolution neural network uh, that is your choice because these two you have already performed so the rest of the part remains same uh, only uh, the focus today is how to pre-process the uh, audio data set okay and then you have to run the model for a multiple number of layers Okay, so let's start and let's have a look at the uh, uh, how do we pre-process this audio data set, okay? Uh, so if anyone of you have already worked with uh, this audio data set, are using the audio data sets in, in your project also. So I hope some of you might know something about it. Okay, so initial concepts are basically physics. So whatever we do, in, uh, we have, you know, how do we represent a wave? Uh, just the concepts from the early concepts from the uh, physics where uh, we represent each and every audio signal with a uh, with a uh, wave okay these are the we we will going to see what is frequency what is amplitude so these things are simple uh, simply to represent an audio signal okay so let us start
in uh, next class we are going to work with uh, rnns that is recurrent neural networks that we are doing in the class so in next lab the assignment would be same only thing that is changes is recurrent neural network so we have we are learning we will learn rnns in our next class okay so okay so first thing is suppose this is a, a audio signal so audio is basically represented in the form of signal in the form of a wave uh, because whenever we speak uh, some particles are uh, moved uh, and some particle oscillates which uh, which creates air pressure and due to that uh, sound wave is generated. So sound is represented with a wave and each and every uh, wave is having some components. So first is frequency and second is amplitude. So let's see what a frequency is and what a amplitude is. So amplitude is basically if this point was zero. So amplitude is basically distance or the magnitude of value of that wave. So this is amplitude and frequency is suppose this was time t is equals to one second time t is equals to two second. So in one second uh, how much my wave how much oscillations it's taking. So this is frequency. So frequency is one upon time period. So time period is the total uh, total value that wave is uh, wave is uh, completing uh, wave is oscillating to complete. OK, so this is time period and then uh, period is basically. Okay, okay. Screen is not visible. Okay, now it's visible. Okay, so this is a Okay, I hope you can see a uh, wave now. So this is a I have drawn a, a audio signal that is a wave and this uh, green part over here. This represents the amplitude amplitude is this is a zero uh, and distance from this. Uh, uh, this point to the highest magnitude so to the point to the uh, at every point this is the magnitude so this is amplitude okay and frequency is uh, suppose this is one time t is equals to one second two second so how much my wave is uh, oscillating in one second this is a frequency suppose uh, so let's see what is a low frequency and what is a high frequency signal suppose this is my this is a signal and uh, if it is this is time t is equals to one. So in one second a wave is complete. So I would say that this is one or uh, one uh, wave uh, which is uh, which is completing in one second. So uh, the frequency of this wave is f is equals to one because in one second it is completing one wave and in another second it is completing second and so on. So this is a low frequency signal and if I talk about high frequency so high frequency would look something like uh, this. So many oscillations in one second. So this is one. Uh, so this is having high frequency. So this is a high frequency signal. Now there is a magnitude component as well which is associated with frequency and both amplitude as well. So uh, if this is a magnitude, so this was the magnitude of this low frequency signal 
and this was the magnitude of this high frequency signal. Now, if I want to draw another uh, with a low frequency itself, I want a high magnitude. So this would be something like this. So this is the magnitude basically. Okay, so frequency is the same, only magnitude is changed. Okay. Similarly, we have a uh, amplitude part. So in amplitude, uh, if I'm, I talk about low amplitude and high amplitude, so this signal is having a high amplitude and this signal is having a low amplitude. Okay. So um, uh, amplitude is basically distance with respect to zero. So how much it's varying with respect to zero. So distance away from the zero that is amplitude. OK, so these are the two important things. Frequency sometimes also called as pitch uh, while we are working with the audio sounds. OK, now another concept is sample rate. So sample rate is. Uh, number of uh, sample rate of let's say my uh, signal is having uh, 44,000 uh, hertz sample rate. Hertz is one upon time, one upon second. So in one second, this means in one second, my signal uh, has 44,000 samples. So this is first sample from here to here, over here. OK, this is second sample and so on. So like this, so sample rate is basically in one second. How many uh, samples are there in my in the wave? OK, next. So these three are the important uh, basic concepts about uh, audio signal. Now let's see how what is uh, uh, how do we uh, use or how do we pre-process? Basically, we want what do we want is we want the information uh, that we can store it in the uh, we, uh, in the numerical form. We want to store the information in our database. OK, so first thing is we have to uh, we have to do sampling and we have to instead of. So this was a whole wave uh, at every sample at every point. We uh, we are having some value. So this was point two. Uh, this was point three point four and so on. OK, so we are basically what we are doing is we are discretizing this. We are performing sampling on it and storing it in the form of that at point 0 0.2. It was having a, some magnitude of 0.7 and I will store it in a in a in the form of data Okay, at at point at 0 0.3. Uh, on X axis, it was having some magnitude 0.75 like this okay so what we are doing is uh, we can sample for uh, like 0 0 0.5 1 and so on we can sample so this depends upon us how do we want to store this data okay so this is sampling next is so this 44000 samples represent in one second i am taking so this was uh, this was wave and this was time t is equals to 1. So in one second, I am taking 44,000 samples. So first sample, second sample, third, fourth and so on. OK, up to 44,000 samples. So this is uh, sample rate. Next is so next is uh, we have now we have sample rate. So first thing before doing it, uh, doing uh, First thing in a pre-processing of a audio signal is Fourier transform. So Fourier transform basically we perform fast Fourier transform instead of Fourier transform. So what does it do is it basically changes uh, the signal from time to frequency. What happens in the real world is our signal does not look like this. It does not look like this. It looks something like this because it is having multiple frequency components and multiple amplitudes. So real world sound signal looks something like this. With, re with respect to time, uh, we stop hearing that signal and its magnitude reduces to zero. And initially its magnitude is very high, okay? 
so this uh, this is the basic representation in a real world for a real world audio signal now uh, what do we want to do is we want to extract we want to uh, perform fourier transform we want to represent the frequencies in the signal because this if you select this part over here it is having multiple frequencies it can be having this this frequency it can be having this frequency it can be having this frequency so frequency information is lost if we if we want to if we are representing the signal like this okay so that is why we perform a fourier transform okay so the idea behind fourier transform is to represent the frequency components in my uh, in the signal okay so uh, if i am performing fourier transform of this signal so it will look something like this on x axis there are frequencies and on y axis there is a magnitude of frequencies so it will uh, consider the whole signal whole signal and it will uh, perform the uh, fast fourier transform of the whole signal complete signal okay so it just takes snapshot of the whole signal and it generates a, 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 a image consisting of uh, frequencies 1 2 3 up to suppose it was having let's say 20 uh, 200 frequencies types of frequencies so first frequency was having magnitude this much second frequency was having this much and so on so it will give us some image like this okay so now we now we have uh, this this image represents this part represents that we have a uh we have this this many types of frequencies in our uh, signal and it also represents the magnitude of these frequencies okay magnitude of these frequencies so fourier transform the aim of fourier transform is to extract the uh, sub components of frequencies in a signal in the whole signal now the disadvantage of this fourier transform or fast fourier transform is that disadvantage is that uh now time information is lost because it is consisting of uh, the for whole uh for whole signal uh, this this uh, fourier transform is generating for whole signal so at time t is equals to 1 we don't know how much uh, frequencies were there at time t is equals to 2 we don't know how much frequencies were there so disadvantage of fourier transform was that uh, we uh, time information is lost we have only frequency and the magnitude of the frequency so to solve this problem uh, ss F, stft was uh, proposed which said that short time for a transform so what happens in this is we have a, a audio signal okay now uh, it will perform short time fourier transform so what it will take is what it will do is it will crop the signal perform the fourier transform of it and it will fourier transform for this and it will generate a uh, frequency spectrum which is like this okay then it what will it uh, do it will take another snapshot another second snapshot from here it will again perform fourier transform and it will return another uh, set of frequencies and their magnitudes now time information is restored so for time t is equals to let's say t is equals to 2 uh, t is equals to 4 so for first two seconds uh, fourier transform was this for next two seconds fourier transform was this then uh, this process is repeated so this is called short time fourier transform so instead of taking the fourier transform for the whole signal we are just uh, cropping it into shorter time periods and we are generating the transform for these uh, shorter time periods okay i hope up till now everything is clear if you have any questions you can ask no questions okay so uh, now we have uh, multiple uh, multiple fourier transforms okay uh, multiple fourier transform for uh, time t is equals to 1 t is equals to 2 3 4 and so on theek okay. hai 
Now uh, it is difficult to represent these uh, multiple transforms like this. So what do we do for representation is we generate spectrogram. Spectrogram. Now let us see what a spectrogram is. So a spectrogram is basically represents three dimensional information. It is actually 2D, but it represents three dimensional information. Uh, so what a spectrogram is in a spectrogram. So we have a color component color. Which represents the magnitude and X axis represents the time and Y axis represents the frequency. So for first uh, for a transform that was generated. So we this was generated for time T is equals to two. Let's say so this was first for a transform. And it was having this much frequencies. I suppose this was 1000. This was 900. This was having 800 and 500. Let's say 200. OK, so uh, the first Fourier first uh, frequency Fourier transform that short term Fourier transform that was generated for time t is equals to 2 up till time t is equals to 2 was some, something like this. And in this Fourier in this Fourier transform, only uh, let's say three frequencies were there. Uh, so this was only first frequency, second frequency, and third frequency. So this was at let's say 200. This was at 800, and this was at 1000. And values were uh, this was let's say uh, 10, uh, one. Okay, this was let's say uh, 0.1, and this was 0.5. Now this magnitude is represented in the color form. So if it was zero, it was uh, red, let's say uh, red or some blue color. Uh, if it was 0 0.1, so color changes over in this scale. So this first value that is over here, uh, or you can say this was white, this was uh, this was white and this was black and up till here all are grays. So basically this represents the color. So over here, so uh, this first short term Fourier transform is represented in this uh, whole spectrogram. Spectrogram. So this is a spectrogram. So this first inform sir, over represented over here is so over 200. So this here it would mark it as a uh, value was one. So it would be white. Then uh, at 800. So this value would be uh, 0 0.5. So somewhat gray. This was gray and uh, then at 1000 this was uh, zero because 1000 was something like 0 0.5. So this was gray. sorry, this was gray and this 800 was uh, black and this was white. So I hope you are uh, getting my point point is this these values are representing the short term Fourier transform over a specific period of a time uh, first uh, short term Fourier transform and the uh, points are represented in a color format. So color is uh, decided based upon the magnitude of the frequency. OK, so frequency magnitude decides the color and uh, at the uh, if certain frequency is present. So that color is if if for the rest of the points that is for 900 for for rest of the points it is marked as black that is zero that uh, this frequency was not present and its magnitude was zero so over uh, so if you see uh, over this whole spectrogram everything was black only the points those were actually present with a certain magnitude they were marked colored okay similarly for next two periods next two time periods it will represent something over here for next two over here and so on. So all the short term Fourier transform are in one spectrogram only. So it is a 2D, but the color information is the third information, which is which represents the magnitude of the frequency. So this is a spectrogram. OK, now uh, from audio signal, what we have done is we have generated a spectrogram. Now, what is a spectrogram? So it's basically if you uh, store it in a uh, you know, we are, let's see, let's see, let's look at the code. You will understand. OK. So spectrogram was clear. I 
guess it was because there's no questions. OK, so let's see the Librosa library is there for working with the audios. Uh, I have searched this library, so if you uh, have a look at this library over here, so you will see that there are so many uh, tutorials available and feature extraction part is also available. You can visit and check this out. Over here. Hmm. Display. OK, let's see. Display of images. So. Display a spectrogram. Spec show function is there. Wave plot is to plot the amplitude uh, envelope of a waveform. So many others are there. Then we have um, feature extraction. So we'll see how to do this part as well. So in this. Uh, over here you can see there are so many examples given. It will show you how to work with the audio signals. So this load function will uh, load your file. Uh, that is audio file. OK. And so on. So let's see. Uh, so after uh, I have told up till a spectrogram, so after generating the spectrogram, spectrogram is nothing. It's just representing time, frequency and the magnitude in just one uh, uh, one array, you can say. So that array is now we have spectrogram. So using that spectrogram, we can give the values of spectrogram as input to the model and we can train our model. So after generating spectrogram, what we have to do is we have to uh, give the spectrogram as input to our model and then our model will train. OK, so in a basic machine learning model, we don't use to uh, generally we don't give a spectrogram as input. What uh, what we do is we extract features from the spectrogram and there are many, many, many types of features that are associated with the audio signal. And first of all, after generating spectrogram, we used to. Uh, gen we used to uh, create, we used to extract features out of, out of the spectrogram and then uh, from those features, we build a machine learning model. But in deep learning, if you give a spectrogram as input, it will give good results. No need to extract features as such. OK, so let us see uh, the let us have a look at the code. Now, Librosa is a library that I'm importing for working with the audio files. Librosa dot display again, I'm importing mounting my Google Drive. Uh, consisting of so many wave files. So audio files are in the form of MP4 or wave. So everybody knows this. So I have set of a set of uh, audio signals in my drive. OK, so we can play this these files as well. So if I play this. Yes. OK. Uh, so we have audio files, this download dot wave and so many others. Next after this is. I am giving the path to the audio file and the file name was download dot wave and I am using load function librosa dot load and giving input my path part of the audio file. So if I am giving the part of the audio file as input, it will load the audio signal into signal as well as the sample rate associated with that signal. So because uh, the each and every audio file is having a sample rate and uh, sample rate value will be stored in this uh, sample rate variable. If I print this, it will give me 22050. This is by default generally. So uh, sample rate is this. Uh, and if I print signal, so it will give me an array, uh, array of values. OK, so this signal will give me the values. Uh, uh, of the signal associated with the signal. Then we have this FFT fast Fourier transform. So for the signal, if I perform fast Fourier transform, uh, I will uh, I'm storing it in a variable which is. FFT over here, OK. Then we have magnitude. Uh, magnitude is basically taking absolute because fast Fourier transform represents gives us a complex number. 
like a plus ib in the form of a plus ib which is a complex number so we leave the imaginary part we only uh, keep the absolute value so we take the absolute value of that uh, fast fourier transform and store it in a magnitude so if you print the magnitude so these are the magnitude of the frequencies individual frequencies okay so the frequencies that are present in the uh, after performing fast fourier transform again the length of signal and magnitude would be the same fast fourier transform would be the same next is a uh, line space function so what we are going to we are doing is we are uh, making evenly spaced uh, evenly spaced a uh, set of you know uh, uh, sub sub components uh, from 0 to 2 to uh, uh, 050 and uh, we are uh, we are basically dividing it into so we are taking each and every value as a uh, frequency so what uh, you can do is you can uh, basically we are deciding the frames so let us see what a frame is suppose uh, this was my uh, signal and i have performed a sampling rate of 1 2 3 and 4 so this is a uh, sample four samples i have taken so i can say that this is one frame depends upon me one frame is just like in a video if you capture a particular image at at a part you take snapshot at a particular time so it say okay this is one frame so i will give the this as input to my model okay so this is a sample rate of so my one frame is having sample rate of 4 okay so this is you can do one you can do two so here we what we are doing is we are taking one one sample rate as one frame okay one uh, one sample as one frame theek okay. hai so this is it uh, next is matplotlib okay now we are plotting the uh, waveform that we have uh, read or uh, wave uh, wave audio dot wave download dot wave signal that we have loaded using librosa so we will use librosa dot display dot wave plot you can uh, check out these functions these are available over here so this librosa dot wave plot function is available over here and spec show is to print the spectrogram wave plot is to print the uh, wave form then so many other uh, functions are available okay so wave plot and then x axis label y axis label and printing it so this is the uh, wave form so x axis time y axis shows the amplitude of the signal okay next is uh, frequency domain we have performed the frequency domain fast fourier transform so after performing fast fourier transform my signal looks like this so x axis represent frequencies y axis represents the magnitude of those frequencies okay now uh, we are cropping uh, what we have see we are seen here is uh, after 10000 signal is repeating itself so this information is similar to this information left hand side is similar to right hand side so what we can do is we can crop this signal so uh, we have to per, we have to check how my audio signal look like so what i am doing is i am dividing the length of 2250 uh, 2050 by 2 and uh, i am taking the only that part and uh, leaving half part only left part uh, is there up to 0 to uh, that is uh, somewhere around here Uh, 11,000 somewhere around 11,000 and uh, 0 to 11,000 in the frequency and in the magnitude. So leaving the right part and considering only the left part. This is also again the pre-processing. Uh, you are pre-processing the audio signals. Okay, plot your audio signals and check uh, how do they look like. Okay. Uh, then uh, so if I'm plotting the left hand side part. so it was like this up to uh, somewhat 11000 over here theek okay. hai next is uh, let us see uh, stft that is short time for your transform <coughs> okay so uh, over here uh, stft is taking input your signal and nft uh, nft decides the how many uh, Uh, how many values that you are taking as 
um, in a sample for a short a short time for your transform over here if you see um, stft in librosa <clears throat> okay there are so many uh, things available so nfft decides the length of the window window signal that you want to uh, give uh, you want to uh, generate for your transform for okay just give me a second <laughs> This is it's the length of the window that you want to take for uh, as input in your uh, fast Fourier transform. Okay, uh, hop length decides how many values you want to skip between the windows. Uh, this is by default some value that is divided by four. Okay, that is leave that part. Uh, there are so many other uh, parameters available. You can just check it out. Over here, so what we are doing is we are performing short time for your transform for the signal. And uh, I'm doing absolute because it also returns the complex numbers. Okay, so instead of uh, taking the complex numbers, uh, we are just taking the absolute values. Okay, next is uh, Librosa dot display dot spec show. Spec show is for printing spectrogram with a given sample rate and given hop length hop length decides the uh, basically it's n fft divided by 4 okay then uh, you can skip that also it will take some default value over here so that is okay uh, so uh, we are we have plotted this spectrogram so what does this spectrogram represents that there are so many black values black means zero so, so many frequencies are there which are not available. So, only you can see the pink and blue part over here. So, only low frequencies are available and low frequency uh, magnitude with this uh, 40, 60, somewhere around here is available. 60 to 100, somewhere around. So, you can check the color. So, this is not a good way to represent a audio signal because it is having so many zeros. It's not a good spectrogram. So what we do is we take log of the value. So in your data set as well, plot in the spectrogram and check that if it's giving a good spectrogram or not, because it is having so many zeros. So it's not a good way to represent, uh, represent the values. Okay, so we are taking log, logarithm. So if I'm taking logarithm of this these uh, values in the spectrogram, uh, so it will give you, uh, spectrogram like this. Now this is a good representation because it has it has rescaled zeros to minus 30. Now instead of representing so many zeros, it's representing minus 30. Now here we can see rest of the frequencies very well. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, again uh, we are uh, printing log spectrogram uh, and we are showing this. So convert your uh, values to log values. And now if you print this log spectrogram, you will get certain values. So it's a two dimensional array uh, representing some values at every uh, point in the array. OK, so so this is uh, OK, I have not printed it. Print this, you will get some values. OK, uh, if you uh, print this log spectrogram, you will get, get some two dimensional array values. NP uh, NumPy array. OK, next is MFCCs. Now we have to look what MFCCs is. MFCC is a uh, coefficient that is there are there are so many features associated with a. Uh, let us see. Uh, there are uh, features like um, time. Uh, they are associated with a. So up till now, what we have done is we were having an audio signal and we generate a spectrogram for it. We generate spectrogram for it. And after generating the spectrogram, either the values, you will get some NP array. Uh, array. 
which is of np type numpy array and you can give this input uh, uh, this 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 array as input to your deep learning model simply a second thing that you can do is after generating the spectrogram you can extract feature feature extraction part is there feature extraction and then you can apply a simple machine learning model now how to extract these features because uh, machine learning model is not able to distinguish identify or extract the features from the uh, this array this is spectrogram array so that is why we need to extract features in simple machine learning model so in feature extraction part there can be uh, many types of features so features are maybe or uh, associated with a time and associated with a frequency domain so the uh, so with the frequencies we have spectral uh, centroid we have um, flux we have uh, mfccs so i'm going to discuss mfccs and then uh, we have for with related time we have amplitude envelope envelope and so many other features there are so many features associated with the uh, audio signal so what do these features represent they represent some properties of the audio signal so uh, mfccs are basically so i'm going to discuss this one the rest all you can visit in the librosa they are all available okay so let's see what it is mel frequency capstrel coefficients okay so this is basically it is having 13 to 40 uh, coefficients and these coefficients represents the textual feature of a audio so these uh, if these values are high this represents structural component is there in the audio okay uh, so coefficients are something like alpha 1 alpha 2 and so on i am just representing it as alpha this can be any other uh, coefficient like uh, simply a coefficient value uh, up to up alpha 13 and it is having some value some value and some value so this is basically a, a features of the spectrogram so this was a spectrogram you will generate the 13 coefficients or 13 to 40 coefficients and then you give these 30 to 40 components as input to your ml model and you will get the output okay so this is simple representation of this is our feature extraction part now let us see uh, over here so this mfccs uh, using the So librosa.feature.mfcc, you can just check this out. Here feature extraction is also given. So you will get so many examples. So this is uh, MFCC. Then we have spectral centroid, uh, spectral centroid bandwidth, contrast, flatness, roll off, spectral roll off. This is also related with the frequency. So there are so many features available. And examples are also given. You can check this up. Okay. Uh, so I have applied librosa.feature.mfcc to the signal and I, if I, uh, in the variable mfccs and if I print this I will get an array of values. Now I have array of values I can give this as input to my model. We have classes. Now have a look at the data set. So you have these this numpy array. So this is I'm plotting the MFCCs over here. So if you plot the MFCC, so this was the first, second co coefficient, third, fourth, up to 13, because I have taken 13 uh, MFCCs over here. MFCC equal to 13. You can take up to 40. Okay. So 13 values are 13 layers are basically represented in the spectrogram. Okay. So for a second up to if you count these are 13 okay and color represents the magnitude uh, ma magnitude of that MFCC 
ठीक है नाउ यू कैन गिव दिस एम एफ सी सी एज इनपुट टू योर आर्टिफिशियल न्यूरो नेटवर्क मॉडल एंड यू कैन बिल्ड द नेटवर्क नाउ फर्स्ट थिंग इज इफ इंस्टेड ऑफ दिस एम एफ सी सी इफ यू आर यूजिंग आर्टिफिशियल न्यूरो नेटवर्क यू कैन गिव एम एफ सी सीज एज इनपुट इफ यू आर यूजिंग कॉन्वोल्यूशन न्यूरो नेटवर्क बिकॉज दिस इज इमेज सो इफ यू आर यूजिंग डीप लर्निंग कॉन्वोल्यूशनल मॉडल यू कैन गिव सिंपल the original spectrogram as input to your model there is another uh, uh, code which is for reading the audio files so this is uh, ipython dot display so this will uh, this will load the audio file ipd dot audio this will load your audio file you can also write the values into a Uh, values of uh, some numerical values into a or you will convert you can convert a numpy array into a uh, example dot wave so this is this will store it as a wave form now the rest of the part you know how to perform that part uh, what you have to do is you have to uh, create a i hope this is clear so you have a set of audios so first audio class was let's say uh, rock and second was let's say classical so you have audio five audio files audio 1 audio 2 3 4 5 and you have 5 1 2 3 4 5 so you have to read all these 10 files uh, and you have to generate 10 spectrograms uh, with respect to each and every uh, audio file and you have classes so this is uh, classes was let's say for rock it was one and uh, for a classical it, it was two theek hai so you have 10 spectrogram 10 classes okay uh, now you have this training data you can divide this whole data into 75% training and 25% testing and you can train your model you can train cnn model or you can train neural network model so that was it anything is that is not clear you can ask i know it's a bit new this portion is a bit new so that is okay uh, don't hurry for this just uh, today you have to just see that how your audio files uh, work how how does these audio file how you can pre process them how you can read them okay just visit libro so there is one more library which is music 21 so that is also available for audio files there are so many others as well in sklearn also sklearn also provide some uh, some uh, functionality to read audio files as well so you can check sql on also theek okay. there is one thing also that's remaining so each and every signal is basically decomposed into a multiple uh, multiple sub signals so if i am uh, if i am talking about a signal so if i am talking about uh, some random signal okay so this random signal basically consists of consists of multiple frequencies this frequency it consists of uh, basically not this so each and every uh, signal can be decomposed into a set of sine waves so first sine wave and second sine wave and so on okay so then we have another and so on so each and every signal can be decomposed into a subsets of sine waves so what we have represented over there is uh, that is why we require to convert this audio signal into a subsets of frequencies into a spectrogram or something like that so that was basic idea behind this
ओके आई थिंक दैट वॉज इट इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन यू कैन आस्क